I'm Ogin Gaich, uh, a consultant in pulmonary and critical care medicine uh, from Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. I'm uh, delighted to, to have an opportunity to comment on our recent article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, um, describing the uh, informatics infrastructure for um, uh, syndrome surveillance, uh, quality improvement, and modeling of critical illness. The um, um, Mayo has been, Mayo Clinic Rochester has been one of the early adopters of an electronic medical records and uh, since uh, 2005 uh, the records of all new patients at Mayo are in electronic format and uh, the records of intensive care unit patients which include both monitoring data like vital signs and uh, ventilator uh, settings and other um, uh, machine outputs um, laboratory tests, physicians and clinical notes have been available um, back to 2002. So over the past several years uh, we develop uh, this unique infrastructure, a near real-time copy of pertinent data um, uh, from electronic medical records um, that can be used by researchers um, for uh, that can be used by, by physicians for both research and quality improvement initiatives. Um, this is a non-proprietary um, uh, copy of the data which allows us to have a greater fle flexibility in manipulating the data than it is usually possible with um, commercial current generation of commercial products. Um, what this actually allows us to do is this uh, near real time, so it's about five to ten minutes delay from the time when it happens at the patient bedside, allows us to develop, um, for example, smart alarms or smart alerts where we combine um, data points from different um, databases. So, for example, um, uh, patient height and gender as a measure of a lung site ventilator settings as a measure uh, from mechanical ventilation, uh, laboratory test and radiographic interpretation of the chest x-ray as a marker of a disease state. And we can develop the algorithm so if the patient is potentially valid ventilated with adverse ventilator settings for that particular lung size and that particular condition, such as acute lung injury, this allows us to to um, send a wireless message through the pager system, email, or RSS to the bedside, to the bedside providers, alerting them or um, you should check the ventilator on patient in bed X, etc. So this is a patient safety application for this. We also use this quite extensively in research applications. So um, research, clinical research in, in critical ill patient is notoriously difficult because most of the interventions um, have to be applied in a short time period because if you delay the intervention the, the outcome is, is not going to be uh, um, successful so the most of like new drugs or new, new processes of care uh, during treatment of acute respiratory failure or shock or or something ne needs to occur within the first few hours, sometimes minutes after recognition of the syndrome. And conventional ways of enrollment of patients in the studies usually leads to a delay of day or more when the interventions that are to be tested are unlikely to help. So this infrastructure allows us to program study entry criteria and alert study coordinators or researchers as soon as the patient is becoming eligible to be included in this study. So then they can run to the bedside, talk to the family, obtain informed consent, and enroll the patient into the study in within the time window where this intervention is most likely to be beneficial. Um, so for example, to study transfusion complications or transfusion-related acute lung injury, which is one of my research interests, we have a smart alert syndrome surveillance alert which looks at any patient who has new respiratory worsening based on a laboratory analysis of arterial blood gases and 
the time of issue of a blood from the blood bank. So if, if there is new respiratory worsening within a several hours from the particular blood product being issued from the blood bank, the study coordinator gets the pager, uh, runs to the bedside and catches that bag, a uh, transfusion bag or whatever is left in it in a bag to grab it for testing before it is uh, lost for, for research. Um, this um, um, infrastructure also allows, um, since it is a copy of the data, it's a near real time copy of the data that researchers have access to, it allows safe testing environment for many of healthcare delivery interventions. So let's say I want to develop a new smart electronic medical record or smart alarm or a, a display of data in certain way. Uh, we could test this on real patient data feeds, but the effects of anything, how we change it, will not be at the bedside unless we are absolutely sure that it is safe and works. So it allows us to, you know, in a simulating environment, model and develop and refine future, uh, uh, let's say, patient safety alert or, or something like that before it is actually introduced in a, into the real practice. Uh, with development of electronic records, the, it became soon clear that information overload and, and um, you know, going too fast with things can actually make the things worse and increase the task load and cognitive burden of the providers. So the, it is not trivial and having the infrastructure which would allow you to test this in real time but in a safe copy of the data rather than in, at the patient bedside. Uh, provides additional uh, advantage of such a system. Currently, um, uh, only 10% of hospitals um, have comprehensive electronic medical records with all data necessary for care of the critically ill patients um, in electronic format. But in the next, uh, the trend is that in the next five to ten years, all hospitals will have data in electronic format and the uh, infrastructure such as this could be um, exported in another institutions where providers would also be able to develop and use electronic data in a in a more to, to come up with a meaningful use of electronic data and meaningful use of electronic records which is one of the important uh, uh, milestones that we need to get towards improving patient safety and uh, improving so-called science of healthcare delivery. The ultimate goal is to integrate these electronic uh, tools to, to bedside practice uh, towards um, achieving safe and timely uh, decisions. Not unlikely what navigation or a GPS does in um, uh, if you are to drive uh, a new you drive a car in a new city, it doesn't really drive for you, but uh, really does help quite a bit. Um, it is important to test these new decision support aids in a safe environment like we described in this infrastructure paper before they are introduced in a practice because they are untoward consequences of too many annoying alerts like we've learned over many years in the intensive care unit. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.